Hey there everyone, this is Andrew at the eBike store in Portland, Oregon. Today we're going to go over all the features in the specialized Mission Control app for specialized electric bicycles. We're going to be covering the following subjects. If you want to skip ahead, there are going to be timestamps in the description by topic. Let's get after it. First thing we're going to do is pair your bike. So to go and pair your bike after you've downloaded the app, created an account, which are the first two steps. This is the menu screen that you should get right here in the specialized mission control app. This disconnected button, we're going to go ahead and press on that and then hit the plus on the top right corner here. We're going to hit the plus and then we're going to look for the bike whose serial number we want, right? So I'm not seeing 190 pop up right here. So I'm going to go ahead and go back and then back into the screen and it'll pop up. Sometimes Bluetooth pops in and out a little bit. Don't worry about it too much, just go back, hit plus again, and then select the bike you want. Sometimes you're gonna to need to press twice on the bike you want. It's gonna ask us for a pin to pair with the bike. And here, the pin is represented by the BLE number, which is going to be on your serial number sticker, which should come either on the bike or in the owner's manual. If it's not in either of those places, call us and we can get it for you from the build notes. So here, we're gonna put in 119421, since that's the BLE number associated with this specialized Turbo Levo. I didn't do that fast enough, so I need to do that again. Back, plus, pair, okay. 119421, pair, the register your bike today option should pop up after that we're not going to register this bike because i don't want to attach this bike to my phone because it's going to go home with a happy customer at some point in the future but i'm not going to register the bike to me right now if this bike did belong to you what you would want to hit is register bike you're then going to have the opportunity to rename the bike after that um, i would recommend renaming it your name first and last because then at that point you know if the bike's brought in to be updated at any dealership or anything like that, um, if any mechanic plugs that bike into Turbo Studio, your name is gonna be associated with the bike from there on out. Um, your name is also gonna be associated with the bike on the back end, since all the information you used when you installed the app on your phone is going to be attached to the bike permanently as well. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit X because I'm not registering this bike, but you would register the bike. That's how you activate your lifetime warranty. Here is where you have the option to rename the bike. So basically in here, you can say, hey, you know, I wanna rename the bike X, Y, or Z. So you can go in here and rename the bike whatever you want to. I'm not gonna do that for this bike because I wanna leave it alone as the serial number. So at this point, what I'm gonna do is go ahead and go back to the home screen, which is on the top left. It's those kind of four quadrants right there. We're going to click on that, go back to the home screen, and we've got a lot of utility from here, which is really, really nice. So from here, we're going to go into settings, first of all, and we're going to make sure that we're in Imperial. Right now you can see that it says that we're in metric, which is not what we want to be in in the United States. Just tap that and it'll switch to Imperial. The other cool thing in the settings tab is you have the option to connect to a Strava profile if you use one. So if you go into account and then linked accounts here, I'm gonna tap on linked accounts. And then at that point, you have the option to either link your Strava or Komoot account to the specialized mission control app, which is really nice. You can actually see power meter, power meter data, cadence, all sorts of stuff um, after the ride auto uploads to Strava uh, after you record it in the specialized mission control app. We recommend not recording with more than one GPS app at a time because they don't always play nicely together. So for example, if you're using Strava and Ride with GPS and the Specialized Ride app all at the same time, one of them might crash. So we recommend just using the Specialized Mission Control app. And then from there, auto uploading to Strava after. You might want to set your default Strava account setting to eBike from normal bike, uh, just so that every time a ride uploads from Mission Control, it gets uploaded as an e-bike ride correctly. We're gonna go back now and back into the main screen here once again. We're gonna look at the Diagnose tab now. So basically here, anytime your bike needs an update, there's gonna be like a little 
red exclamation point that appears right next to the diagnose stethoscope right there. So when you have that happen, you know your bike needs an update. This bike is currently updated, so there is no red exclamation point next to the diagnose tab. If your bike did need an update, a red exclamation point would appear right there. So we're gonna go ahead and tap on diagnose, go ahead and go into device updates, and we can see here this green tab at the bottom indicating that everything, uh, as far as the software and the firmware on the bike goes, is up to date. If not, that'll be red right here. Bikes equipped with a Mastermind TCU, which a lot of the 22 bikes, uh, especially at the 5.0 level, are equipped with Mastermind TCUs. Basically, it's gonna give you the option to click on that if it's red, and then say, update bike from there. So you'll have the ability to download some of your updates to your phone. Your phone will in turn then update your bike. Even if you have a Mastermind TCU, not all of your updates can be done um, you know, from your phone. You're still gonna have to bring the bike in for some of the updates here at the shop. Pretty much any specialized dealer that sells electric bikes should be able to update your bike for you. And that's pretty much the case nationwide. Um, we, you know, always check for updates whenever we have bikes in for service here. So anytime you have your bike in for service, just know that it should be updated, uh, you know, just fine once you take it in and take it back home after. All right, the next thing we're gonna look at in the diagnose tab again is advanced diagnostic. So if we ever ask you to submit an advanced diagnostic, basically what we're doing is asking you to um, submit a report. So if you go to diagnose and then advanced diagnostic, you're gonna type in your report of the symptoms you're experiencing. The bike's gonna take a full systems report and then attach it to your report and then send it to both us and specialized. That's gonna allow us sometimes to triage problems remotely, um, which we can't always do, but it's a really helpful tool to you know, enable us to maybe sort out your problem while you're still at home without you having to come back into the shop. So if a mechanic ever asks you to submit an advanced diagnostic, that's where you'll go. Up here, you can see the odometer, which is pretty nice. Helps give you a metric for maintenance intervals. So if a mechanic you know, looks at your chain and says, oh, you know, you've got about 50% of your chain left to go and you've gone 400 miles on that bike, you can be pretty sure that around 750, 800 miles, you're gonna need a new chain. So it's a really nice um, kind of visual cue for when you need to be replacing things. Into the tune area of the app, which is right here. So if I click on the tune setting, all right. So what we can see now is once we're into the tune setting, you have Eco, Trail, and Turbo. Now this is a mountain bike, so if you don't have a mountain bike that you're playing with, you know, the modes are gonna be called Eco, Sport, and Turbo. Same thing, right? Eco, Mild Salsa, Trail or Sport, Medium Salsa, Turbo, Hot Salsa. All right, this is basically changing how you mix your salsas in here. So we can go in and add some spice, make it a little bit more mild, whatever you want to do. And there's a lot of features in here, and this can be a little bit confusing, so bear with me. The support power and peak power are individually tunable in every single mode. So you have eco, eco, trail, turbo, right? So basically, your peak power and your support power are different in this way. The peak power is going to represent your power ceiling, right? So this motor has about a 530 watt maximum power output. So your peak power in eco mode here is gonna be 35% of 530 watts. So your power ceiling is gonna be held to 35% uh, of 530 watts. If you wanted to change that, you could. You just move the slider here and it moves up and down to set it to whatever you want. I kind of like pairing support power and peak power together for this reason. Support power, is how quickly the bike is gonna help you get up to your power ceiling. Peak power is the power ceiling, right? So if your support power and peak power aren't paired together, I just don't find it as intuitive. Every rider is different though, so there's no right answer here. But, you know, in trail, with this current setup, support is 35% and peak power is 100%. That basically means that the bike is not gonna give you as much support as it would if you changed it to say 60, 100, whatever. But your peak power is still 100%, so you can still get the motor all the way up to that 530 watt output. It's just gonna take a little bit more work from you. I kind of like pairing support 
and peak power the same, like I just said a second ago. So we're gonna go ahead and change this to 6060 for support power. Basically, at this point, this is allowing us to see that um, you know they're equal in power output. So basically, the support power is sort of gonna match how quickly you're spooling up to that power ceiling with the power ceiling itself. I think it feels most intuitive to have you know your support power and your peak power matching. So kind of 35, 35, 60, 60, 100, 100 is my personal preference for you know a base mode. You can activate new presets, which are right here, by creating different presets in the app. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit the plus button and create a new preset, and we're gonna call this 30, 60, 100, save. Okay, uh, we're gonna create another preset here in a second. We're gonna call this one the shuttle preset and I'll explain why. So I'm gonna go into eco and make this 50-50, trail 75-75, and turbo 100-100. Acceleration response, I'm gonna kick up a little bit to 60%. Acceleration response is basically just how quickly the motor spools up. So if you're riding on super loose terrain, like sand or gravel or mud, and you don't want to be burning out all the time, losing traction, doing the Scooby-Doo, right? I would just take acceleration response down to zero to let the motor kick in a little bit more slowly on slippery or super loose terrain. But for now, we're going to keep it at 60% because this is a shuttle mode preset. We're going to change shuttle to 100%. Now shuttle mode is basically just how much torque the motor puts out at a higher cadence, right? So when you're shuttling back up a fire road on an electric mountain bike and you're spinning pretty fast, it's an advantage to have more torque. The mountain bike isn't normally going to do that as a default because again, you could be spinning out in situations where you want more traction. So I'm going to crank up shuttle mode. It's going to give me more torque at a higher cadence, basically while you're seated and climbing. And with 50, 50, 75, 75, 100, 100, it's a great uphill climbing preset. So we're gonna go ahead and hit plus and add a new preset that says shuttle, uphill shuttle actually. Okay, preset saved. That's great. I'm gonna create a new preset that is now a workout preset. So we're gonna do 20, 20, 40, 40, and 60, 60 for that one. Awesome. So uh, acceleration response, I'm going to take it down to 40%. Shuttle, I'm going to take that back down to zero. Okay, we're going to hit plus, and I'm going to call this workout because this is going to give you a little bit less power in each setting, but you see you still have three distinct power modes that are all separate from each other and correspondingly like a one-third, two-thirds, three-thirds level of boost. Okay, and if you want to change your preset when you start a ride, you're just gonna go ahead and go into the app, go into Tune, go into Presets, say, oh man, I'm going uphill. I really want that uphill shuttle preset. I'm gonna go ahead and select that. It's gonna think for a second and then say preset activated. Okay, once it says preset activated, it means the bike has been changed into that particular preset. You can always change it back into whatever you want, right? So if we wanna go back into the stock preset, there is a factory default, but I go, I'm gonna go ahead and go back to my 306100 because again, that's sort of the, the preset that I like to be in personally. All right, preset activated. There's a couple more things down here which you might be wondering about. And just as a heads up, if you have anything but a specialized mountain bike, like one of the commuter hybrids, a Vado or a Como, for example, you will not have acceleration response or shuttle mode because those are modes that are associated with special mountain bike motor tuning, and you're not going to have to worry about them. Startup assist mode is the mode that the bike is going to start in as soon as you turn it on. So I'm going to go ahead and change that to Eco because starting up in sport, trail, or turbo is sort of like leaving the CD player on max volume in your car, uh, turning your car off and then getting back into it only to have your ears blasted off, right? I uh, 
maybe I'm dating myself here with CD reference because I'm in my 30s. But the startup assist mode, again, my preference is eco, just so you're having a little bit more of an even keeled start. Uh, you're not having a bike that's super powerful right off the line. It's just enough boost to maybe help you out a little bit, but not so much that it's jarring from a start. The beeper and stealth mode, you can turn on and off. That's just the, the beeps that the bike makes um, when you're changing modes. Stealth mode on a mountain bike is gonna turn all the lights off um, on either your Mastermind uh, you know, TCU or just any regular TCU, the blue lights are gonna go off so that uh, the bike just looks a little bit stealthier while it's out on the trail. If you're riding somewhere where you don't wanna be advertising that you have an electric bike, say, or the lights just bother you, whatever you want. You can turn those things on or off, completely up to you. This is the default setting though, the beeper is on, stealth mode is off, so the display is fully visible. So yeah, that's about it as far as our tune settings go. The ride section of the app, right? So that's this portion here. In the ride section of the app, you have three separate things to see. You have map, stats, and smart control, okay? You can start a ride and record it from any of these. So in map, stats, or smart control, any of these, you can go ahead and hit start ride at the bottom. It'll record the ride. You can see how far you've gone, how much power you've used, um, you know, what your battery life looked like throughout the ride. It's really quite useful. Um, as soon as you finish recording a ride and it's gonna go down into here into your My Ride section, and there's gonna be a feed that sort of pops up with all your rides there afterwards. You're gonna be able to look through them, see what you did, super helpful. All right, now we're gonna go back into the ride screen. So you can go into map. Stats is if you just wanna see these. Statistics, like you have your phone mounted on the bike for whatever reason. Map is just gonna show you and record where you've gone. Smart control, I think, is the distinguishing feature of the uh, Specialized Mission Control app and really kind of the most forward-thinking thing I think Specialized has done in a long time. And one of the reasons why, honestly, their electric bikes are so much better than everybody else's at the moment in terms of, you know, connectivity and control, um, because this allows you to, you know, set a distance and an amount of climbing and all that stuff that you want to achieve before the bike dies and not have the bike die on you before you meet that distance. Again, super forward thinking. It eliminates the whole range anxiety part of the picture. That's actually a term that uh, Tesla came up with and, you know, Specialized has adopted. So basically not worrying about the bike dying. So you know, if you said, oh, dang, today I forgot to charge my bike, okay? There's only 50% charge. Shoot, dang, what am I gonna do, okay? You're gonna go into the ride setting, go into smart control, turn smart control on. You can do this by either duration, distance, or heart rate, okay? But say we wanna go by distance, which is usually my preference. Okay, you know, I just Google mapped my ride. It told me I need to go about 25 miles, and that over the course of my ride, I was gonna have you know, 2,400 feet of elevation gain that I needed to get out of the way. Climb response is basically how quickly the bike is gonna go into turbo on a steep hill. So a lot of people just like to leave that at zero because they don't wanna be doing a ton of extra work on a steep hill. Because remember, once you activate this, the bike is gonna lock you out of the controls and just give you as much boost as it thinks it can without letting the bike die before you've gotten this distance or this amount of climbing, right? So. Think about, you know, if you want a lot of extra boost up those hills, keep climb response at zero. If you're feeling spunky that day and want extra exercise, right, you can go ahead and go to climb response 150 feet, 75 feet. And that's basically going to delay when turbo kicks in until you've either done 75 or 150 feet of vertical ascent. So keep that wherever you'd like to. Battery remaining at the end of the ride. You know, I would strongly recommend keeping that at 20% uh, or higher, basically for the battery health reasons that we talked about earlier. Um, you know, battery is going to be happiest between 20 and 80%. All right, we'll go ahead and hit start ride. And at this point, the bike behind me just beeped. And that's because uh, the, you know, blue bars on the TCU just shifted. So it'll look kind of like sport mode, but you'll notice the top two bars are illuminated now uh, instead of the side left two bars. You know, so that's going to indicate that we're in smart control. You know, it's uh, just giving you as much boost as it thinks it can while you're still making your ride whatever distance you want it to be without dying. OK, 
Okay, as soon as you finish your ride, you've gotten to your destination successfully, you're gonna go ahead and turn that off. Okay, so you're gonna go ahead down here and hit the stop button, hit end ride, and it's gonna say the ride was too short to be saved. Well, that's not surprising as we didn't go anywhere, so it's smart, it knows that. Uh, it's fair enough, I think, that we didn't record that ride. But anyway, anytime you are worried about the range, go into ride, smart control, turn that on, set your settings, and hit start ride, and you don't have to worry about your bike dying on you before you get to your destination. Super, super cool. All right, I think that's the majority of the features in the app. Um, there are some other small things that we could talk about on a more personalized level if you'd like to later. But for now, that's everything you need to know about specialized mission control. Thanks so much for watching.